Welcome, and thanks for joining us today for our sales leadership webinar, Guiding the Buyer's Journey with Quality Content. I'm Austin, and I work on the Zoho CRM marketing team. Now, I want to introduce our speaker, Vivica Von Rosen. She's the Chief Visibility Officer of Ingresso, the largest provider of full-spectrum digital sales transformation solutions. Vivica is a best-selling author, and her writing's been featured in Forbes, BuzzFeed, Inc., Entrepreneur, Sales Power, and the Social Media Examiner. She's also a LinkedIn expert and shares deep insights on how to leverage many platforms to improve content marketing and drive business growth. So why did we choose Viv Vivica for this webinar? I started out with a brief discussion about how the content curation is vital for a salesperson and how it helps you engage with buyers to close more deals. Vivica had more interesting facts about how and why the salesperson has to think like a marketer and act like a salesperson and how the right content can influence a buyer's behavior. So we teamed up with her to educate us on creating, curating, and mapping content across every stage of your buyer's journey. So that's my portion. I'm going to go ahead and let Vivica take it from here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Austin. And hello, everybody. Yeah, this is actually one of my um, favorite, favorite topics to talk about, just because I think that content obviously, is so important. And uh, my background, um, I, I skew a little bit towards marketing than, from, than sales, um, or at least I did until about a few years ago when we created uh, Vangresso, and at which point I realized, oh, wait, I'm in sales too, um, which was really cool because our CMO, uh, whose name is Bernie Borges, he he was a content marketer as well, and you might know his name. He's he's a pretty prolific content marketer. Has spoken at you know inbound and and social media marketing world, etc. Content marketing world. Um, when we well when we all came together and and formed Vengresso, you know he's like we we need to marry these two things. We need to align um, content and. Uh, content marketing and sales and he actually came up with the idea of content for sales enablement and um, really how to help the salesperson create curate and share that content so that's what really that's what I want to talk to you about today first of all let's talk a little bit about the modern buyer and why the modern buyer seems to be a little smarter than the modern seller, not you all, I'm sure, but maybe some of your colleagues at your company. We'll talk about content for sales. How is it different than content marketing? And how do you as a salesperson or as a marketer or as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, how do you really grasp and utilize this concept of content for sales? We'll talk about not only the buyer's journey, the one we all know, but this new buyer's journey, which has a few more steps in it um, and how you can create content for those different steps within the buyer's journey. And then finally, what can this look like for you? So look at the examples we share and think about how you can utilize those strategies in your own business as well. So first of all, who is this modern buyer? Well, we all know they're digitally enabled. They're on their computers in the bathroom, which by the way, not a great place to be on your phone doing business in a public restroom. I'm just saying, I was traveling recently, I'm sitting in the airport doing my thing, and there is a woman doing business in the stall next to me. Like, that is the wrong place. I don't want you to be that digitally enabled. Um, we wake up in the morning. I think our computers are fused to our hands. We've all been out to a restaurant where the whole family is looking at their their phones and not right and not their their family. So we know we're maybe a little bit too digitally enabled, and that has actually disrupted the way that we've done business. And it's so important now more than ever to make sure that our content is where our buyers are at all times. Whether it's Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, WeChat, you know, you know your audience. You know if your audience is on LinkedIn or not. Um, in my B2B world, they're very much on LinkedIn, but you can make that decision. A lot of the a lot of the um, strategies I'm going to share today, you know. Like I said, I'm very B2B LinkedIn centric, but a lot of them are not even LinkedIn strategies and a lot of them you can utilize 
obviously on the other social channels as well be where your audience is, right? Don't be Blockbuster. <laughs> don't be the record store. Um, don't be the corner store. You need to be nimble. And it's funny because we always go, you know, it's the technology that's changed everything. It's Netflix that changed everything. It's Apple that changed everything. It's Amazon that changed everything. Uber, Lyft that changed everything. Airbnb that changed everything. No, it wasn't. It was customers going, but I don't want to consume my my videos by driving to Blockbuster. I don't want to call a cab. I don't want to use a hotel. And it was by smart people going, okay, where are our audience? They're all on mobile. What do they want? Convenience. How can we serve it to them? And all of these new companies were formed and the other ones, well, we know, you know, Toys R Us, obsolete. So I want to make sure today, as I'm talking about content for sales and content for sales enablement, that you are serving up the right content to your audience at the right time and at the right place. You know, here's some other interesting stats. And those of you who um, work bigger deals, you probably have experienced this, right? It takes 6.8 people right, to make a decision in the average B2B decision-making process. So it's not one person going, yeah, it's six people discussing and sharing content and having meetings and talking to their spreadsheet managers and <laughs> talking to their CTOs and their CFOs. And, and it, it's not as easy in many cases to make a sale as it used to be. On the other hand, using some of the tools that we have out there, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc. we have the ability to put our content in front of all of those decision makers. One of the tools I'm going to show you later is called OneMob. And um, we, we had such a good example of this 6.8 people. We sent, one of our salespeople sent, you know, a, 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 one of their points of content. It wasn't the only decision maker, but sent one of our points of content, contact rather, some content via one mob, and we could track how that video made its way around the company. And by the way, um, we ended up uh, booking um, time with, in fact, three of the decision makers and selling them um, our product. So we know that there are more people out there making a decision and we know that we need to get our information in front of those people. And we know in many cases, our point of contact are going to be our advocates. So we need to provide them with the information that they need so that they can advocate for us. And social media is a great place to do that. Additionally to that, how, how successful are people these days at cold calling? You know, if you're diligent and if you like the game of it, and if you've got some of these, strategies, you, you might have a 10% a success rate. Realistically, most people have more like a 2 to 3% success rate. And it's really, really, really time consuming. And it's really, really, really exhausting. And most people don't like cold calling. I, for example, hate it. So <laughs> we're creating content and sharing content in a public manner and then managing to funnel it to the right people in a private manner, where that helps is it allows us to build that KLT, that know, like, and trust factor. So when our content gets in front of the people that they are more likely to read it, to digest it, and so when we reach out to them, through a phone call or an email or, you know, Facebook Messenger or a text that they're more likely to respond to us. So we want to kind of put that on its head. Yes, 90% of decision makers aren't going to respond to cold calls, but we wanted to make it 90% of decision makers will respond to us after we're active on social media with a great content for sales enablement campaign. Some other cool facts. This is a good screenshot, by the way. Or an excellent thing to say, share on Twitter, should you want to do that, right? So 84% of B2B decision makers start the buying process with a referral. We know that. How do you get that referral? You start building those relationships on your social channels. And then you ask for the referral. But if you don't have any kind of visibility on your social channels, how are you going to get that referral in the first place? 
And yes, you might know five or six people that you know you can reach out to at any time. But using a tool like, say, LinkedIn, you can see who you have in common. And by continuing to share helpful, useful information, in this case on LinkedIn, you stay top of mind with those referral partners or re strategic referral partners or friends or clients or past clients, and it's way easier to ask for that referral. So if 84% of B2B decision makers um, are starting uh, closing through the refer starting and closing through the referral process. Don't you want to have that presence and that top of mind awareness? 75% of B2B buyers conduct research in social channels for products and services. I'm surprised it's only 75%. This is a this is this you might recognize some of you this infographic. Um, you know it's a year old. It's probably higher than that. You know what's really interesting is LinkedIn just came out with a statistic that 62% of modern buyers research their sellers or their vendors LinkedIn profile before buying from them, but only 55% of B2B sellers research their clients. I thought that was insane that modern buyers are, well, smarter than we are. So we wanna turn that on its head too. 42% of sales professionals list prospecting as their biggest challenge, only 42%. 82% of B2B buyers consume five to eight pieces of content from the winning vendor. That is a really, really important statistic. We wanna make sure that you are the winning vendor which is why we want to make sure that you are sharing the right content at the right time to the right people. And then this is really interesting for those of you who are kind of on the fence about video. Did you know that 59% of senior executives prefer to watch video than read text? So something to keep in mind, you know, and this includes Instagram, right? If you're, if you're direct messaging with video via Instagram, you might have a, a stronger open rate than just sending a message or an email. You will have a probably stronger open rate. Again, we'll show you one mob and how that works for us. So let's talk about content marketing versus content for sales enablement. Now, question for you all. In fact, I am going to uh, list a poll here. Would you consider yourself, before I get started any further, would you consider yourself to be a sales professional, a marketing professional, both or neither? Oh, interesting. For those of you who are um, putting neither down, let me know in chat what you would consider yourself to be business owner, entrepreneur, solopreneur, retired, <laughs> taking this webinar because you had nothing else to do today. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and close this poll out. I'm actually not too surprised um, by the results here. So 33% of you consider yourself to be fully sales professionals. 7% uh, marketing professionals, 42 both. Yay! You, it's really hard to be solely one or the other in today's day and age, right? So that that doesn't surprise me. And then 18% um, neither. Um, and it looks like we've got some business owners in here. So that that makes sense to me. All right. So as we move forward and talking about content marketing versus content for sales. Oops. There we are. This is my definition of content marketing. You know, it's not perfect, but to me, content marketing is the ongoing practice of publishing content to attract and retain your target audience, bring them closer to a purchasing decision and or reinforcing loyalty. Generally, the big difference between content marketing and content for sales is content marketing is generally one to many right? You're creating video, you're doing, a, you've got a website, um, you're doing um, uh, uh, social posts. So it's generally one to many. Whereas content for sales is when content is used by salespeople specifically for the purpose of creating and or sustaining sales conversations between themselves and their prospect. And generally, it's one-to-one. -one. Now, it's 
never exactly either or, right? Content marketing builds awareness, allows for discovery, creates interest in a brand, and content for sales builds trust between a salesperson and a buyer, creates conversations, and influences buying decisions. They work really, really well together. So let's go ahead. I've got a, another question for you. Are you currently using your company's marketing materials, especially for those of you who are consider yourself just in sales, those 33%, are you currently using your company's marketing materials to engage with your buyers? Yes, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we'll give it another minute or so. Well, okay, a couple seconds or so. All right, so most of you, here we are. Most of you are in fact using your company's marketing materials to engage with your buyers. Good, excellent. Some of you are not um, curious as to why, and it's probably because you don't have or don't think you have or don't think you can get the right type of content, but let us know maybe in chat um, why you're not using it. And some of you are like, I'm not quite so sure of the question here. So we'll go ahead and hopefully answer that question coming up here next. Okay, so content for sales. Let me give you some secret sauce. This is the first screen that you are going to want to maybe take a picture of. So a lot of times you're going to have ungated or quite frankly gated assets, right? So these are webinars, videos, white papers, blogs, or infographics that you know, that are on the blog, um, you know, maybe you've got an internal employee advocacy tool that you use like Everyone's Social or um, Gagalamp or email <laughs> and share with your, you know, share with your employees, hey, we got this thing going out, make sure to share it with everybody. But it's essentially ungated assets that are out there that anyone can get access to, which is, not to be mistaken or confused with vaulted assets. So we've got gated, let me go back to that. We've got gated and ungated ass assets. Now, gated assets are things that you have to give us your email address to get access to, right? It's, it's, the, it's the little click here and then you go there and, and we want your email address and your phone number and your firstborn child in order to get this say white paper. So that's gated assets. Ungated assets are assets that, you know, just are out there, blogs, etc., webinars, videos that you might have on YouTube. Those are, you don't have to give anything to get, you just share it and there it is and we're good to go. But the secret sauce here are vaulted assets. And I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more and how this all works. But vaulted assets are assets that the company holds. So this would actually, for those of you who are in marketing, this would be the marketing team's designation. This is what they have to do. And by the way, if you know that your marketing team isn't doing this, share the link to this video once you get it in the follow-up, right? And go listen to this video, <laughs> especially about 10, 10 minutes in. Vaulted assets are those that the marketing department holds and allows you to access those assets, whether they are gated or ungated, so that you can share them at the right time in the right place with the right people. And you know, you'll notice here, well, these look like content marketing pieces, case studies, research reports, thought leadership pieces, technical briefs, um, examples, third-party content. Yes. This is all content. The idea of vaulted assets simply means that it may or may not be public, but within the company itself, whether there's one of you or 1,000 of you, within the company yourself, you have a way of sorting these assets so that they align with the buyer's journey so that the salesperson can go in and say, you know what, I've got a prospect. They don't even know about our company yet. What assets do you have that I can share with them? 
but rather than talking to a person, you just go into, it might be a G drive. It might be a tool like eClincher. It might, you know, it might be an Excel list somewhere. I, I don't care what it looks like, but the, the key here is that you've got content and that it has been segmented, tagged, divided up into um, content that's relevant for a particular part in the buyer's journey. Right, so the salesperson goes, all right, I have this prospect, he doesn't even know about our company. What do you have, right? What, what piece of content do you have that I can share with this, this prospect so that they can learn a little bit more about us and what we do and how we're different from everybody else? Or the salesperson goes, you know, this, I, I've actually had a few conversations with this uh, prospect, getting ready to have our first meeting. Do you have some case studies that I can share with them? And these case studies might be private. In, in our case, what we do is we have testimonial videos from clients that we are not allowed to share publicly because of who they are, et cetera, but we're allowed to share them privately. So we use everyone social. We've got them segmented away. So at any time, any one of our salespeople can come and go, okay, I need some testimonials from current clients. They're not public, but I can take one and I can share that link with my prospect that my prospect can watch, absorb, yay. Or it might be you've got a current client and you're ready to upsell, side sell, down sell, round sell, ask for a referral. You might need some case studies, right? Or you might need some checklists. Again, they might or might not be publicly available, but you know you can go to your vault and just search on tags, search on Excel, however you segment it, but you can go in there and find something relevant and share with your audience. So this is the secret sauce right here. This can make a huge difference, just having the right content for the right step of the buyer's journey that your salespeople can easily access and share. So again, get this recording and tell your marketing team to start listening at about 20 minutes in. <laughs> okay. So I've been talking a lot about the buyer's journey so far, right? Let's take a quick look here and let me uh, launch another poll. How many steps are there in the buyer's journey? So let me know, how many steps do you think there are in the buyer's journey? Oh man, you guys are pretty smart. <laughs> Did I already say, or did, are y'all really smart? <laughs> All right, how many steps are there in the buyer's journey? Looks like we're about, looks like we're at 100%, awesome, okay, cool. So yeah, so most people think that the buyer's journey is three steps. And um, so, which is awareness, um, uh, uh, awareness, consideration, purchasing, right? I personally think there's at least seven steps. I'm going to talk about seven steps today. Um, and, you know, there might even be more. Now, some of you are like, what is this buyer's journey of which you speak? Have no fear. We're going to go through that in depth. So when it comes to the buyer's journey, yeah, typically awareness, the buyer realizes they have a problem, consideration, the buyer defines their problem and resolves options to solve it, or researches rather options to solve it, and then they make their decision and hopefully it's us. Personally, I think there are seven steps in the new buyer's journey. So the first one is in fact awareness. And by the way, um, most people show, or a lot of people used to show buyer, the buyer's journey like I did, straight line, right? You do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. Um, as we have learned, it's really not just step one, step two, step three. It is a circle. So the first step, of course, is awareness. Now, the second step, which is just letting people know that you're out there, what makes you different from everybody else, um, you know, uh, these are the big general campaigns that go out there and this is where content marketing lives, right? And, and then there's interest. So how do you, what do you do to generate more interest? Like they already know you exist, but, but how do we generate a little bit more interest about you and your company? 
Um, and then there's what I call the instigation phase. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But as soon as I describe what, what the instigation phase is, you'll be like, oh, yeah. Now, mind you, instigation is not necessarily relevant to every business out there. Um, not not every business can launch a campaign like this, but uh, it's it's something to consider, especially if you've got a lot of competition. Then, of course, there's consideration. It was step two. Now it's section four. Um, and then right after that, once they've started considering and you're nurturing that relationship, hopefully they'll make the purchasing decision. But that's not where it ends, right? We got to keep them satisfied. We want to keep them educated so that they will continue to buy from us. Why we spend so much time and effort around awareness and getting new clients and prospects when really it's so much easier just to upsell our existing clients, I have no idea. So the first the step one, two, and and it's it's a it's a dotted line because this is not a clear delineation as we we saw earlier it's not either or but steps one two and seven are generally what we talk about when we talk about content marketing whereas instigation can is certainly the consideration purchase and satisfaction three kind of could fall either way quite frankly um, but consideration purchase and satisfaction generally are a little bit more content for sales meaning generally we're doing content one to many here and down here we're usually doing like one-on-one -on -one engagement so what does this look like so first of all creating brand awareness that's awareness generating interest yes the instigation is really about disruption and creating new conversations and as i just mentioned this is this is really important when it comes to companies that have a lot of competition out there a lot of cabs out there a lot of hotels out there so how did we disrupt that we create uber right and then how do we let people know about that we come back up here and talk about awareness and we start to generate so it's not it's not sequential it is constantly revolving right constantly revolving um, and then consideration we give those specific answers that people are asking and we can do it one-on-one -on -one, we can do it one on many and we provide those solutions to those questions and then obviously ensuring customer success so many companies drop the ball here and then we want to create that greatest greater ecosphere whether it's more products more services or more channels right omnichannel making sure that people are seeing um, seeing us wherever they are so there's a lot of different elements here so let's dive, dial down a little bit more awareness produce big picture and one-to-many content and it's really for the generalized buyer persona right this is this is anyone who falls into your one two three five or 15 buyer personas things like that expensive produced video blog posts ads pr pieces your website right these are all general big picture awareness step one type pieces of content it's one these are definitely one to many now interest happens when content becomes more focused specifically on the different buyer personas so this might be hey we've got a company this is more like hey we've got a company and by the way we serve lawyers in new york who have children or we serve B2B sales teams of 25 or more, or we help entrepreneurs with their customer relationship management needs, right? Or, hey, we're Zoho and we have, was it 40, 45 different offers, right? So different buyer personas. So you're starting to tighten up your content to speak to those different buyer personas. And this can look like eBooks, white papers case studies specific webinars for that buyer persona oops but we're we're starting to tighten up and serve still publicly content 
to those different personas, right? We're generating interest, we're educating. So that is key to step two. Step three is instigation. I love this, but it's, it, like I said, it's, it's not really <laughs> um, relevant to everybody. But this is where buyers realize they might have a problem. They're considering the solution and you need to differentiate yourself from your competitors. It might mean disruptive content. One of my favorite examples of this is the Squatty Potty um, YouTube video with the unicorn who poops rainbows and glitter. Have, have you all seen that? It's hilarious. Um, Poopery is a great uh, example of disruptive content. Um, so not for everybody, but think about what you can do to differentiate yourself from your competition with really disruptive content. It usually resists the status quo. We all do it this way, but wait, there's another, there's a different way of doing it. It challenges, us, oops, it, it helps to challenge assumptions. So one of the things that we did at Vengrasso is we have a lot of people in sales training who still believe in cold calls. And I'm not saying cold calls are dead, I'm just saying I don't wanna do them. And so we had kind of a resisting the status quo challenge with a cold calling company and we we created this fake boxing uh, match and, and we did it all on social and it, and it allowed both parties to kind of voice their, their um, beliefs and then we had a winner at the end, which of course was us. But, <laughs> but it allowed us to create some disruptive content. It resists the status quo that we need to make cold calls in order to sell and it really challenged some assumptions out there so think about different ways that you can use this instigation model to start creating separation between you and your competitors and still kind of on that borderline of one to one one to many now consideration of course that's when our buyer realizes they might have a problem and they're considering your solution they know who you are maybe they've already read their four to you know eight pieces of content or six to eight pieces of content from you the winning vendor or hopefully the winning vendor so they're already considering you for um, a solution now you need to create a tighter relationship with the decision maker and this is when you go to your vaulted content right that you somehow have organized the marketing team somehow has organized for you and now you start sending emails one-on-one -on -one. well it's probably one to many but it appears to be one-on-one -on -one with content that is relevant to that specific buyer that specific buyer persona um, video email I'm, I'm an enormous fan of one mob but there's um, uh, 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 vid videolicious I think is one there's a bunch of great um, video email tools out there um, so video email really personalizes the conversation between you and your audience so really really powerful tool if you're not using um, uh, video for your social selling efforts you definitely want to consider that of course private messaging through LinkedIn through Instagram through Twitter through Facebook Maybe not through Twitter. Lord knows, I, I don't look at mine anymore, but um, certainly through these other platforms. Texting, if you can get a text. Okay, so cold calling, right? One of the reasons it doesn't work is because the, the person on the other end doesn't recognize your phone number, especially with all the robocalls out there. I, I think I have three or four different spam blockers on my phone right now which means my doctor couldn't get through the other day. Um, but I have three or four spam blockers because there's just so much junk out there, robocalls, et cetera. So if you are able to start texting with a client or a prospect, guess what? Your name shows up in their phone. So when you call them, they'll go, oh, it's John, it's Jane. And even if they don't know who John or Jane is, at least it's a name, right? At least it's not, you know, call from, Loveland, Colorado. I don't know anyone in Loveland, Colorado. So texting can be really, really powerful tool, by the way. Another tool, and you'll see we talk about this a little bit more in the consideration phase, is interviews. Whether you've got a podcast or a blog, if you're interviewing your prospects 
you're starting conversations with them and it's kind of a win-win situation because you can turn that interview into a blog post with their permission of course share it socially tag them on it so now we've gone from one to one to one to many tag them on it hopefully they'll share it with their network it builds no like and trust it builds confidence and credibility and you've associated yourself now with this prospect so um, really powerful tool if you're not using interviewing in your sales or selling strategy, you might consider it and you'll see how we use it here in just a minute. Then of course, purchasing, yay, they're gonna make a decision and they're gonna go with you. And we all know, you know, texting, lots of texts, lots of phone calls, lots of Zoom calls, lots of emails. Um, cause marketing, by the way, if, if someone's on the edge, but they realize that you're aligned with um, a, a, a nonprofit that they believe in or you do volunteer for a nonprofit that they believe in or your company is aligned with a nonprofit they believe in that can sometimes by the way be a, a tipping point so it's important to uh, to realize that there are um, there are a few things that could tip someone in your uh, in your direction and cause marketing I'm, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it but that's that's uh, that can sometimes be the little magic formula there. And then of course, satisfaction, they've made their decision, they've bought your product or service. A lot of people go, thanks so much for the money, see you later. But don't drop the ball. This is really the time that you wanna educate and nurture your audience. You wanna make them your, your client. You wanna make them feel special. You don't wanna just ghost them. And this goes from buying a gadget on Amazon to you know having a $60 million client but you want to keep them fed. What's a great way to do this, right? Forums, um, groups that they can be part of. Feeling part of a community is really important, whether you do that through a, a Facebook group, a LinkedIn group, some other kind of online forum. Um, one of the things that we do with, with our Selling with LinkedIn program is we've got discussion forums and an Ask the Expert so that we're always, they've already bought from us. We could say, you know, thanks for the seven or 600 bucks. Really appreciate it. See, you know, enjoy, see you later. Don't bother me. Um, or we can hire someone full time to manage those discussion forums and the ask the expert because we want to keep our current customers satisfied because we want them to refer us. Um, we, we have all kinds of educational videos and blogs that we continue to share through our email with our customers and our prospects. We of course send personalized emails to them and hey, once in a while we even pick up the phone um, if they have questions. So we wanna keep our customers satisfied. And then finally there's the upsell, side sell, um, referral, and this is just where we keep those happy customers happy and with the hopes of course that they're going to refer us, we do that through community, um, through customer appreciation campaigns, uh, referral initiatives, and again with the cause marketing efforts. So you can see there are way more steps than three. There's probably more than seven, but we don't have much more time than, so that's what I wanted to cover today as far as our buyer's journey. And you need content in each and every one of those steps of the buyer's journey. And so again, make sure your marketing team listens about 20 minutes in to 45 minutes, actually to the very end. So let's talk about what this looks like. What are some of these strategies that we've done? So I mentioned earlier interviews. Um, this has been huge for us. So we've got two podcasts at Vengresso. Um, the Modern uh, Marketing Engine is the one that uh, Bernie, brought, uh, Bernie Borges, who's our CMO, has. And so we are always interviewing top CMOs, CTOs, CFOs, CSOs, uh, basically executive suites um, at companies. And we want to do it so that our audience goes and gets um, information from some of the leaders in our industry. Of course, we want to do that. We, wanna, we want you to see how um, Sati at Zoom is doing things. We want you to see how uh, Zoho is doing their marketing. We want you to see how, how they do that, but we also wanna do business with them. And so what we do is we interview our best prospects. It gives us one-on-one -on -one time with them. It helps to position us as thought leaders in our industry, which we are. Um, we then take that information and we amplify it with our employees. Now, interesting fact, 
we've only at this time I don't know we got like 22 employees at this time um so we're not like a giant company by we're, we're not nearly as big as, as zoho um <laughs> but our our social imprint is 96 million i think it's 96 million it might be more than that now but with our you know with our 22 or so employees our monthly imprint and of of how much content is being seen under the Vangresso name is is 96 million social imprints. So if we were just sharing content through our company page on LinkedIn, it would be like a thousand, <laughs> maybe three thousand. But because we amplify it with our team, it gets exponentially more visibility so that's where employee advocacy is really really important um, the other thing that we do is we amplify with our audience so we'll go and align with like in this case with um, Q-Ball we'll say hey we've done this thing here's all the texts here's all the updates here's all the social materials that you need now you go and promote it to your audience as well and that really amplifies but it's such a win-win situation for everybody involved. Um, we've got over 250 podcasts that we've done this way. We've landed uh, 10 really big deals, um, including you know SAP, CenturyLink, BrightCove, all through just interviewing people on our podcast. So that is something to consider when it comes to content for sales. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's content for sales enablement and that it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but it gets promoted exponentially through our audience but it's a really great way to have that one-on-one -on -one time that conversations with your prospects so that is a great strategy to make use of another one is native video whether you're using LinkedIn Facebook Instagram now in this case this is my friend Bernadette um, she was doing a native uh, she was doing a video series on YouTube and then she was sharing it socially um, so when she first started doing this series, she was sharing it only on YouTube. She got 314 views, 68 likes is pretty good, and 30 comments. So she got a little bit of engagement. And then she saw a, a webinar that I had done or a training that I had done on, on LinkedIn native video and said, oh, well, I've got the video anyway. Why don't I upload it natively? This is not sharing a YouTube link. This is taking that video and uploading it natively that she had created anyway. And she uploaded it natively on LinkedIn and suddenly her views, <laughs> like look at the difference, 314 views, 11,000, 26,000, right? Plus increased likes and comments and engagement by 10X, you can see down here. So if you are already creating content, and you're comfortable enough with video, upload that video natively on LinkedIn. One of the things that I did, and you might have come here through that, was I did a little promo for Zoho, and um, they 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 promoted it and shared the link. And I'm not quite sure how many views that one got. But then I went, oh, they've done this beautiful video and edited it for me and everything. I was going to upload it into LinkedIn as native video, and we got over 4,000 views on that. Um, now, I didn't just go, hey, join the webinar, join the webinar, join the webinar. I shared some interesting sales facts um, and then said, and hey, if you want to learn more, webinar link is below. So this is where we took a content marketing piece that Zoho created and I used it to personalize it, still one to many, but personalize now to my audience on LinkedIn, smaller audience, obviously, than Zoho and Zoho's audience. And then the other thing I did was I took the link from that particular video and I shared it with, hey, Susan, my friend Susan, who's on the call and some other people. And that was a content marketing for sales enablement because I shared it one to one with them. So if you're already creating content video, rather, by all means, create a native video, upload it as native video, and then share it on LinkedIn or what other tool you want to use. But in this case, it works really well on LinkedIn. The other thing is, if you're a sales professional and you're like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have, you know, I don't have a, a full screen, you know, studio behind me. Like you guys can't see me right now, but I'll turn on my, I'll turn on my uh, camera in just a second here. Um, you know, I, I don't. How can I do this? You can actually just pull up your phone, 
talk about how awesome your company's latest blog post is and why people should read it and upload that as native video. There, you don't have to have a huge, cool studio in order to create powerful visibility using LinkedIn. And then you take that link and you share it with your individual prospects. One of the things that I do, and I'll show you that as well later, if I remember, I'm gonna make a note to myself, show bookmarks. Um, anytime I get a question on LinkedIn, that, and I find myself answering it a lot, um, I'll actually create a video about it. And then I will take that video and uh, share it on LinkedIn it's publicly, right? So that's content sales, but then I'll save that video. And then the next time I get asked, hey, how do you do this? I just share the link to the video. So content for sales enablement. So it's not either or, it's often taking content you already have and customizing it and personalizing it for the individual. Now, another thing that you can use, and this is a tool, um, this is a sales navigator tool called Point Drive, but you can do, there's, there's many, many different um, tools that you can use to track people's engagement on your content. I just happen to love Sales Navigator. So anytime, and you'll see an example of this at the very, very end of this webinar, so stay, stay on for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, I'll create, I'll use Point Drive, which again, Sales Navigator tool. It's a, you know, it's basically um, a landing page that has a bunch of resources on it and it tracks you know, it tracks people's activity through that content. So it's a landing page um, for events. I'll use it as a landing page for events. So like a Zoho webinar, for example, I'll share that link and then I can see people who've jumped in and I'm gonna talk about some resources or maybe, um, you know, the infographic you want, uh, you want a copy of the infographic that I talked about. No problem, I have it in point drive. You might wanna see the recording. It's not there yet, obviously, but I'll upload it um, onto Point Drive for you. You might want the checklist that I'm gonna share with you at the end. No problem, I've uploaded onto Point Drive. And if you're signed into LinkedIn, right, so it's partially gated, you have to be signed into LinkedIn, but you'll go through, you'll click through, you'll get that content. And I have an average 30% click-through rate um, with a custom URL, which is, by the way, if you wanna go to www.contentforsales.com, it'll take you to my Point Drive to show you an example. But I'm able, you know, that's way higher, by the way, than email, right? I'm able to view the activity and it allows me then to follow up with the people who view my content and have direct engagement with them, um, in this case via LinkedIn, because it's a LinkedIn tool. But there's other tools out there for other social platforms. Um, this one, for example, this was my LinkedIn video resource. Um, it had 127 views. I think there were four or 500 people in the audience, so not bad, 127 views, 86 downloads. It led to 12 sales conversations and three closed deals. So really powerful, and I could track that, right? I could track that through uh, LinkedIn Point Drive. Um, One Mob. We are an enormous friend of OneMob. If you invite me to connect on LinkedIn, you're going to get my LinkedIn OneMob re response. Here's an example. Here's our CEO. And so everyone who sends him an email when he's out of office, he'll send a one mob out of office reply. Or if they invite him to connect on LinkedIn, he'll send them a LinkedIn direct message. So this is just, we just took a, um, I, can't, I think this was one month, um, but we just, we measured both. So the, the numbers were really, really similar, which was interesting, but um, through LinkedIn, he had 973 views, uh, 2,000 clicks on the different resources that we had on the, the OneMob landing page, which is why I like OneMob, because you can have a landing page. Um, 11 hours of watch time and a 15% click-through response rate. And very, very similar uh, timelines for his out of office reply. Um, so again, if you want to connect, uh, just email me at vivicatvengrasso.com. Put Soho in the subject line. It might take me a day or two because I realize now I didn't create my out of office. Um, but uh, say hi, and I'll show you an example of my one mob. Or if you invite me to connect, um, if you just if you if you Google LinkedIn expert, my LinkedIn profile will show up. Um, you can invite me to connect. Just say you saw me in this webinar. Otherwise, my 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 assistant will take care of it and I'll never see the message. All right, um, but one mob, really, really powerful tool that you can use existing content and personalize it for your, your prospects. And then finally, this was, I just, um, I, I love this example. This is my friend, Joey. He had a, it's not really an ebook, it's just a landing page. It's the new, no BS guide to, to lead gen. This is, 
absolutely, you know, awareness phase um, content. It's just an ebook. It's ungated. But what he does is he takes this ungated content and he shares the link to it to anyone who engages with him on LinkedIn, whether it's an invitation or just an engagement on a post. He sends each and every person a link to this ungated ebook. He was able to track in 45 days 120,000 revenue specifically through LinkedIn and then $250,000 through just uh, other social engagement. This is just a landing page with some really good information on it, but he is diligent about so content, right? Content marketing awareness stuff, but he takes the link to that page and shares it one on one content for sales enablement one on one with everyone everyone who engages with him on LinkedIn and social and email, et cetera. So really, really powerful stuff there. So as we wrap up, right, make sure that you've defined your modern buyer and your modern buyer personas and you know where they live and you know what they're interested in and you know what their points of pain are and you know where they are in the seven step buyer's journey. Then make sure that your marketing team is creating the right content for every step of that buyer's journey and we've seen some examples of what that can be and then make sure that your sales team has a way of getting that content you might need to add some new content for those extra steps and then maybe review this webinar again and how can i create or how can i take or how can i repurpose or how can i curate this great content and share it with my buyers at the right time, at the right place. You'll notice conversions go through the roof if you do that. So we're wrapping up here. I'm gonna take questions. Um, we have so much information. If you wanna see what we do on our company page, go to joinonlinkedin.com. You literally just type in joinonlinkedin.com or maybe Austin, you can pop that into, uh, you can pop that into the, um, oh, I had one more poll, my bad. I'll, I'll launch that while I'm doing this here. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, if you want examples of what we do on our, our, our LinkedIn company page so that you can replicate it, um, go to joinonlinkedin.com. We have so many free, um, free trainings little bite-sized trainings if you go to our YouTube channel. So if you just go to join on youtube.com um, and then Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter too. Yes, we are active there still. <laughs> All right, so as I launch this poll, let's see if I did my job right. Do you have a better idea? Oh, <laughs> I guess. Do you have a better idea um, now of how you, okay, I have no idea that that did not come across right guys on the poll, but do you have a better idea of what content for sales is? That's all I want to know. Do you have a better idea of what content for sales is now? Yes, no, or I don't know. I have no idea what that question is. Awesome. Okay. So again, content for sales is really just taking existing, because I have one no, content for sales is really taking that existing content that you already have and sharing it with your buyer more on a one on one method. So it's having it, the, the, the two elements here are having it vaulted in such a way that it's easy to find. And number two is making sure you're actually sharing it with them one on one when possible. So awesome. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. 97 per. I, I, I had 97% success rate. I'll take it. That's an A, right? <laughs> you now understand what content for sales is. Um, that didn't, this was a fail. Uh, this, this was a content for sales enablement that didn't work because we, we couldn't get the, uh, we couldn't get the word that to work, but we have some more examples of content for sales here. Um, if you go to contentforsales.com, it'll take you to point drive. So, and what I will do is when we get the recording from this, I will actually upload the recording there as well. So um, we are going to share with you a, some content. Uh, let's see, where's the handout? Joey, do, or Joey, geez. Um, do you want me to share that or they already have access to that? Yeah, so, the handout is underneath the handout drop down menu on the GoToWebinar control panel. They can download perfect. it from there. Perfect. So you can download that. So if you want to know what type of content to share um, to be successful, we've got that. But if you want to check out some other resources and how I use content, 
in my content for sales enablement, you can see contentforsales.com. Also, our website is Vengresso. Also, I respond to texts. That's my phone number there, my private cell. Yes, it is. And I'm old, so I also respond to emails too. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of that and let's go to Q&A. And here's a Zoho's I know we're, we're okay. We started late. Can I have five extra minutes to answer? Yeah, questions? of course. Yeah, I was just going to say on behalf of Zoho and Vivica, thank you guys for joining. Um, don't forget to post those tweets with the hashtag smarter sales leaders. And we're going to stick around for 10 minutes to answer as many cool. questions as uh, we can get in. Um, awesome. So I have one here. Uh, I think this is when you were talking about LinkedIn. Someone asked if you have a link to share for an upcoming webinar, do you add that link in the post or would you add it in the comments below? What a great question. So um, we, for a long time, were doing it in comments below. And the reason for that was uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn wants to keep people on its own platform, obviously. So um, if you put a link, or at least for a while, if you put a, if you put a link in a post that you were sharing, and I don't know if this is the same for, I would guess it's probably the same for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram too, but if you put a link to a post in um, LinkedIn, it wouldn't get as many views. And so we started putting those links in comments below. The problem is it might have gotten more visibility, but then no one could find the link. And so we weren't actually driving as much traffic. So we have gone back to putting it in, and you can see here like 50, 000, almost 50,000 views. Um, we've gone back to putting the uh, links right into the content, ah, right into the content itself. And usually with a little emoji or something, so it's easy to see, although that kind of wash is out there a little bit. But yeah, we're, we're back to putting it in the actual content itself. Now, we'll do it after, we'll do the link after a lot of helpful, useful information. Um, and actually, here's the example that we used for the uh, um, using native video. So Zoho was nice enough to take a video I created here in my little studio and make it prettier. Um, <laughs> and then I uploaded that natively. Um, and then I used, you'll notice if it ever loads here, I used the same facts and stats that I did in the, in the other. So that, that looks almost exactly the same. Um, but the, the video is more of a sales video. Now we did not get as many views, but we still got a lot of engagement, 21 con, uh, comments. Um, so yeah, either way, but you'll notice. And now that is a lot more obvious, right? Join here. <laughs> little stars, fingers pointing. So yeah, that's, 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 I don't give short answers, by the way, you probably figured that one out. <laughs> that, that was great. Um, we had a couple people ask this from the beginning. You mentioned some of those video email platforms. Can you repeat what you thought those were, or, or uh, if you can remember now better than, than earlier, what, uh, what the name of those were? Yeah, see, I only use one mob. <laughs> so um, vid Videolicious is one of them. Um, Vi oh God, they're all they they, they all say you, you know what just just email you know video email platforms that they'll, they'll all show up here i'll do it for you now <laughs> um the reason i like uh the reason i like one mob is the landing page and the and the tracking right so um bomb bomb yep that's another one um, that I've heard about, I've never used it, but bomb bomb, uh, Vidyard, Vidyard is the other one um, that I've heard of that a lot of people like. Um, I just, I use one mob just because, you know, I can see the tracking, I can see the views and uh, more importantly, the, you know, and you'll get this by the way, there's a, there's a landing page. There we go. There's a landing page that I can then put more content. So this is the only sales pitch on this whole landing page, but I've got um, three really you know, useful things. So if you invite me to connect, you'll get this from my assistant or me. Cool. Um, someone asked, uh, for smaller organizations with fewer resources, do you recommend um, uh, somewhere to start on creating content? Like, is there more valuable content pieces to start with? Yeah, yeah. So um, talk to your salespeople. And the best content, I mean, the content that I just go back to over and over and over again, me personally as a representative, and I don't sell, do sales anymore, but as a representative and a founder of my company, um, the, the, people quest, the questions people ask 
the the answers are the content that I create. So and and I save them here. Um, so and I put almost all of them into a native video, and then I I just you know. I, I name them, I rename them so that I can find them and share them. But yeah, almost anything that I get asked, I create a video around it. So I would say that's if you're smaller, a company, and you don't have, you know, $25,000 to create reports, um, that is the best way of doing it. Whether you answer those questions as a blog post or a video or whatever. And then, of course, you can use that content on all of the different platforms and then you can also share the link to that content one-on-one -on -one. so i would just start with the questions that you always get asked other than like how much is this going to cost me great uh do you have any suggestions for organizing different types of content um uh, you know like i guess to deploy it easily yeah. to your sales people etc the, vault, the vaulted content um honestly if you're just starting out you don't have a big budget excel <laughs> You know, um, it, it really, you just have to make sure that they're still up to date. So you want you want to make a task for yourself to review the the blog posts, the videos, the whatever you have. But you could just create an Excel sheet. Um, you could divide it into you could divide the Excel sheet into you know maybe seven tabs or even just seven sections. Uh, you would um, the first thing would be what you know the title of the content, the link to the content, maybe a description of the content, and then it would already hopefully be um, and of course one piece of content could actually go in all seven stages potentially but uh, you would have it um, sorted into your different stages so that's the free way of doing it you just need to make sure if you are sharing that content with your um, team that it's updated so a sales guy isn't going to go in and share a webinar that is completely irrelevant right um, the other thing uh, you could do is uh, like a drive like a, a Dropbox folder or an R drive and then you could just have different folders within that drive again just with the with the de, with um, the different stages and then you could put the content into those files and with the description and the tags etc we use um, we use everyone social to do it and we're actually looking for a slightly better solution everyone social is a phenomenal employee engagement um, and uh, an employee engagement tool but it's um, it's a little bit limited. You could probably use something like Slack, uh, right? Um, Co-schedule. So there's a lot of tools out there that you could make work. We're actually, we're, we're looking to develop our own right now, but it's not done yet. <laughs> uh, okay, one more. Um, do you have an opinion between gated and ungated content and which one's better? Yeah, you know, it really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to drag people from social into your own um, marketing funnels, then you need gated. Um, but if you're trying to build awareness and positive sentiment, uh, then you need ungated. So one of the, um, and we should probably gate this, and, and one day we probably will. But if you go to uh, vangressoebook.com, by the way, if you need a better profile, this is an excellent example of ungated content. Um, let me put it, uh, share to entire audience. There we go, Vangresso ebook. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did, good. Uh, so this, oops, and then hit enter. Um, this is a perfect example of ungated content that eventually we will gate, um, but we're gonna take this page, and Joey, we, we actually, um, after I saw how successful Joey was, <laughs> This is the entire reason we have this ungated right now. Uh, but we're going to take this and we're going to package it up into a nice little ebook, PDF, and that will become gated. This, by the way, folks, is my entire, my second book, um, 101 Ways to Rock Your Personal Brand. It's essentially that book in, in, in one page. So um, it's ungated right now. We have, we, this is possible, this is I think the most viewed, because we can still track, we just don't know who the people are, but we could track obviously click rates and open rates. Um, this is the most viewed content on our website. Um, but we don't, you know, unless people sign up for more, uh, we, we, we don't know who they are. So um, it really just depends on if you're trying to get visibility and drive, or if you're trying to move people into your own funnel. Cool, any other questions? I think that's it. I'm happy to show anybody anything. Yeah, I don't believe we have any more. But cool, so uh, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining today and stay tuned uh, for our next edition of the Sales uh, Leadership Webinar Series.